In today's video for the Z32, I'll be putting in some parts I ordered from Z1 Motorsports, starting with the small stuff, like the hood prop rod bushing, upper radiator mount bushings, and hood prop rod clips to keep it out of my shroudless fan. Plus an air freshener. Welcome back. So now that I have this thing running and clean, I want to get it where I can actually drive it every day, which means fixing this coolant leak. And all I need is some hose. I got this uh, Z1 Motorsports silicon coolant hoses. Uh, I got two different sizes. I don't know which size I'm going to need, but I'm sure one of these is going to work. I'm going to change any of the any of the other small hoses in there while I'm at it. I'm also going to change the heater hoses. I also got the Z1 Motorsports uh, silicon hose kit for that. I'm going to change some vacuum lines that may seem suspect while I'm in there. Uh, and I'm going to need the intake plenum gasket as well because that whole intake has to come off and while I'm at it I got some cheap uh, 300ZX ignition coil leads uh, I'm gonna put on there as well uh, a lot of these are broken so hopefully that'll help with it running funny um, but once I take care of the coolant leak, I'll figure out why it's got that little bit of a misfire. Um, and it could just be those uh, ignition coil wires, connectors. Um, but we'll see. Okay, I've got the intake off. I've got the wiring up out of the way. Uh, I did have to cut this hose. It's a lot easier to just cut that hose in half to pull it off than try and get this clamp off, you know, with how solidly that hose is attached. But that's okay. I'll replace it, no big deal. Uh, I broke an ignition coil, so my plans of getting this thing running today is out of the question. I'm gonna have to order one. I was hoping that just the boot came off, but it actually did break the coil. That sucks, I'm gonna have to get a new one. Um, it looks like the two bypass hoses on the rear where the heater core are what's leaking. The One of them is hard, but it doesn't seem to have any coolant coming out of it. Whereas the bottom one that wraps around to the other side of the engine definitely has a split up here. And when I mess with it down there, I can hear coolant leaking out. So hopefully just those two hoses will take care of the coolant leak. Um, but before I take care of that, 
I'm going to try and clean a bunch of this crap up uh, to keep anything from getting where I don't want it to. I don't know a ton about these cars now. And the first time I worked on this thing, I knew even less. But I did remember uh, seeing that the injectors were this square style instead of the round style. So I think that this engine has been swapped into this car at some point in the past and it's an older style engine in a newer style body. But that's okay. Eventually I think I want to get the upgraded injectors because there is a ton of corrosion on this one. Um, but it doesn't look like it's inside of the injector itself. I think that coolant leak has just caused a bunch of corrosion in that area. But I'm going to try to get that all cleaned up and then I'll get back with you when I'm ready to get it put back together. All right, I got the heater hoses off and the coolant bypass hoses. The heater hoses, for the most part, are fine, but they are full of gross water. The upper bypass hose is just full of debris. It's got a bad spot on one side. And then the lower one, which sits in the car like this, back in the back, uh, it has a split on the top that wasn't leaking, but then down at the very bottom, it's got a tiny little hole right there. And that is what was causing that coolant leak. It was just spraying out while the vehicle was running. All right, it turns out the heater core is completely stopped up. I'm assuming some uh, stop leak was run through it, but it just stuffed up the heater core. So I went ahead and just put back together kind of what I could. I threw the intake on, got some of the wiring in place. Uh, I've still got a few parts left to put together, but I'm out of time for today to work on it. So we'll pick this back up when I have the uh, heater core hose and I'm gonna have to order an ignition coil, so we'll pick it up again after that as well, and then we'll wrap this uh, project up. And I'm gonna step in to this part of the video real quick from a couple weeks into the future. Uh, I had to stop because I had to work on something else that I wanted to get done before it got too cold, and I'll be showing you that in probably about a month, so once I get it edited. But from there, I had to get the ignition coil connectors all wired up, which I'll show you real quick uh, what I did there. After wiring all five other connectors, I decided to record the sixth and final one to show the steps I took. I did the process correctly, but made a big error. Since all wires were black, I started with the biggest, which was the middle one. Easy enough. After stripping and soldering those together, I moved to the next one. I mistakenly cut it too close and had to peel the cover back further, which was enough to distract me. If you look close at the plastic connector, you'll see they're not oriented the same, which means I wired it backwards. Once I soldered all three, I slipped the heat shrink over and used the heat gun on them. Then taped it all up and it was ready to blow up the new ignition coil. Once the new ignition coil was in, it smoked it almost immediately. And after figuring out what was wrong, I fixed the wiring and replaced the coil again. And once that was taken care of, I got just a piece of heater core hose 
uh, and basically bypass the heater core for now. I am going to replace the heater core, uh, but it's kind of expensive and a little bit unexpected. So I'm going to have to wait on that. I've got a few other projects to take care of first, but once I got the ignition coil all wired up, got the replacement that I had to order, got the heater core hose put on, I started the car up and it ran like crap. And so I thought it was just going to be the ignition coil problem that was it, but it wasn't. And so I spent a couple days here and there, just an hour or so a day on uh, using a multimeter, looking at all the ignition coil wires and all the injector connectors and injectors themselves, oming those out to see what was wrong. And everything was checking out okay. It still would run like crap. I used a hammer and extension like I did on the Prelude forever ago to tap on the injectors and that didn't help. I used the stethoscope to listen to the injectors. They were all firing, so wasn't finding the problem. And then I thought maybe I messed up something when I burned out that ignition coil, uh, maybe a PTU. So I checked on that, nothing seemed wrong. So I went back again to the injector connectors, unplugged them, uh, scraped them out a little bit with a pick and plugged them in and everything now runs properly as I'll show you. So in the next video, I'm going to fix the windows and then I'll have a few different videos after that. And then when I get back to this thing, I'm going to uh, work on some interior parts that I have ordered, uh, possibly some more in the engine bay, but I've got a few things to do before I can actually get this thing on the road. And you'll see that on a later video. Thanks for watching.